Well, here we are, Immunology 3. Slide that over a little bit out of the way. I subtitled this Complement and Mac. And you might say, what am I talking about? Well, the complement I'm talking about is not like complimenting this dog. Let's say his name is Brutus. Nice job, Brutus, cleaning up after yourself. That's not the compliment I'm talking about. For this case, the compliment up here I'm talking about is a set of proteins made by the liver and macrophages mostly that work together that when activated do a number of things. And one of the things they do is form this MAC, which is a membrane attack complex. And I'll be spelling that out later. I'll have a slide that shows you how to spell that. Complement does other things too. And of course, I've got visuals for that as well. And of course, visuals are, I don't know, are really important. And here's a great diagram figure, you could say. I'm going to blow it up and do parts of it so we can look at this. Lo and behold, the complement system is a series of proteins that kind of cascade down and other molecules are made in this process and then the MAC is made. And there's like three ways to start this. So you should be able to name the other, th the other ways, but I want to concentrate on the classical pathway because it's interesting. The classical pathway briefly is when antibodies attach to the antigen they were made against. And up here, and I know this is a little fuzzy because I've got it blown up, but I want to keep it large. This FC portion, if you remember, right this follow me down here remember antibodies are y and the stem of the y is the fc portion okay so there are two types of immunoglobulins remember immunoglobulins is another name for antibodies there were some figures on that i'm never i'm not sure if i ever verbally said that antibodies equal immunoglobulins and you remember we have five types of immunoglobulins and it's the GM that activates complement. So it could be IgG or IgM, right? So here is, I'm looking down here now on the lower left, here's the antigen that this antibody is made against and then complement starts being formed, okay? So that's the classical pathway. There's other pathways that don't need an antibody. Okay, so then I'm going to move this up a little bit. And no matter how complement is activated, you end up with like these molecules called C3. Now the C refers to complement. And it's kind of interesting, just as a bit of trivia, you know, they go up to, I don't know, number nine or even more. And the thing is, you might say, were they numbered in the order that they appear? And the answer is no. They were numbered in the order they were discovered. So it's kind of interesting. Like here's C3, and then C4 is back here, and then C5 is over here. So the numbers, the absolute numbers, don't really mean a lot. I mean, they are identifying molecules, but one doesn't go to two, two doesn't go to three, and all that stuff. Anyway, we get this C3, and we're going to be talking a little bit later about animals that are deficient in this molecule. But do you see everything kind of plays off C3 from this point? And so if you're deficient in it, I'm stealing my thunder for a little bit later, then you may not be able to form max. Okay, let me scroll this up a little bit or move it up. And there's a lot of molecules. We're not going to have to know all of them. The point is... There's a lot. There's a series of proteins. And lo and behold, at the end, you get a MAC, membrane attack complex. 
it's very seldom, at least in my experience, called the terminal complement complex. Hmm. This one, the MAC, it's inserted to in the membranes of bacteria and so forth. And what's kind of a little crazy, it can be inserted into your own red blood cells. And I think after immunology three here, I'm going to do immunology four, which is going to be called equine neonatal isourethrolysis. It's a very interesting story, and it's all based on a pores in red blood cells. So maybe what I should do is just bring this back in case you want to look at it again before I move on. But that is a heck of a good graphic. It's almost going to be too small, but there it is there. Now, you know, that was a rather complicated graphic, although there's other illustrations that are way more complicated than that. I just wanted to show you another one that's a little more straightforward. It shows that there's three ways to activate complement. You end up with these molecules. In this case, the C3B binds to the surface of pathogens. And when that happens, you attract other cells to the area. You make those pathogens more likely to be phagocytized. And then you get the MAC formation. And hope, hopefully, death of a pathogen. But now remember, this can be happening on red blood cells. And you could have death of red blood cells that will actually lead to an animal's death. And that's a bad thing. Now, I found this neat illustration that talks about how those pores are formed and there's all these molecules on top, which I'm not really going to worry about. Here's an uh, illustrator's depiction of a pore. You end up making a pore in a membrane. It's like, okay, is this really fiction or not? Well, lo and behold, let's look at the lower left. I'm going to just actually look like this and enlarge it. Here is an electron micrograph of those actual MACs. And we're looking kind of on the end. So the dark is the hole in the cell membrane. That is neat. Now, electron microscopy gets you, can get you thousands of magnifications. And I'm not sure what this is. Um, then it's got a side view, the middle picture here, a side view of the pore. And you can call them a pore, you can call them a tube. And then here they've got an illustration of the inside diameter of the pore is 10 nanometers. Now that's very small. So now I've got an illustration that talks about how it's, act not how it's activated, but what happens after activation. Now this is titled activation of the complement system. I've seen it also referred to as fixation of the complement system or complement fixation. So those are two terms. I like activation better. It's a series of steps. And nonetheless, you get activation of these proteins. And they do a multiple multitude of things. This opsonization, that means you're kind of like sugar coating whatever, um, wherever these complement proteins are attached to, and they're, they're more likely to be phagocytized. AGS over here is antigens. I'm not sure if I've said that yet, but you know, antibodies are usually abbreviated capital A, little b, or lowercase b, and antigens are capital A, lowercase g. So opsonization, more likely to be eaten. Chemotaxis, you should know that's attracting cells to that area. <coughs> Excuse me. Lysis, rupturing of the membranes. When you have all those pores in there, it, it basically ruptures the membrane. You get clotting, uh, not clotting, but clumping of the antigen-bearing agents. So then maybe more likely to be seen. And then here's one, altering the molecular structure of viruses. So maybe they will not replicate. Okay, now we're gonna do like a little pathophysiology. 
and you know it's always good to talk about things when it doesn't work right okay so in this case I want to talk about when there's maybe a deficiency of these proteins so let me bring this one down and this is not so much a deficiency but this is when the immune complexes are produced in autoimmune diseases and if you remember right autoimmune diseases are bad so I want to take away when I said deficiency that's my next slide so these are this is cases where the complement is being fixed but it's inappropriate it's an autoimmune disease well here this text talks about vascular endothelium and you might you get the molecules binding there and get bad things happening to the vascular endothelium which is really the wall of the blood vessel and then you get kidney glomeruli uh, having bound these proteins too and that's the glomerulus the glomeruli are, is the plural of glomerulus and when you activate the complement and you get a MAC formation then you can actually wreck your own cells and have kidney damage damage to blood vessels so then that's basically what they're saying here in the middle initiates an inflammatory response that destroys vessel walls or the glomerulus and then it can lead to blood clots that's what a thrombus is and ischemic damage when blood vessels are damaged then the tissue will not get a good blood supply and that's what ischemic or ischemia is and then a lot of times these things don't heal back to a normal tissue they heal with scar tissue and then this last point some of the late proteins that means like c8 7 whatever activate and there should be a space there but there's not activate prothrombinases and that's an enzyme of course that will then activate some blood clotting then let me get that visual out of the way and bring my other one that then really talks about deficiencies which i misstated at the beginning so here's a illustration of deficiencies and i know in both the human population and dogs there are these deficiencies and perhaps in other animals but they've been studied of course a lot in humans and then dogs so what they're talking about here is a component of the complement okay and our graphics didn't show everything but like if you're short of b or d you tend to be susceptible to pyogenic pyo p-y-o that's a prefix meaning pus genic means making pus forming bacterial infections susceptible to having those infections and you lack those factors that bring in macrophages okay then the c3 if you're lacking that because this is deficiency now then you tend to be susceptible to bacterial infections uh, why because you can't attract macrophages in there and then you're not able to make a mac okay so then the bacteria are not killed and then these later components five through nine it looks like if you're deficient of those you tend to be susceptible to gram negative infections okay you have an ability inability to attack the outer membrane of gram negative bacteria so just a little thing to say hey there's deficiencies and then the previous visual was hey when things are working but it's in the autoimmune state and that's not good and finally here's a list of those fine illustrations i used thanks a lot